Hi everyone. Well, now that the Fitna furore has died down somewhat, it's interesting to see how many people are condemning the film and how few people are condemning the thuggish intimidation that forced Live Leak to remove it. What happened to all those people who keep telling us, I don't agree with what you say, but I'll defend your right to say it? Where have they all gone? Maybe they're on vacation. No shortage of politicians, however, lining up to accuse the film of falsely equating Islam with violence, which is a bit like falsely equating Walt Disney with Mickey Mouse. I'm sure anyone who follows the news would also equate Islam with violence. I know I certainly do, because any time anybody criticizes Islam, they're usually threatened with violence. Islam without violence is like an egg-free omelette. The religion is predicated on violence and the threat of violence. It's a religion of peace in the same way that North Korea is a People's Democratic Republic. But we're not allowed to say that because if we do, we'll be threatened with violence. When the film was actually removed under threat of violence, some Muslims actually had the nerve to congratulate Live Leak for promoting tolerance on the internet. I tell you, whenever I think about this stuff now, I feel like I'm in a hall of mirrors, don't you? To be fair, Dutch Muslims do deserve some praise because they could have reacted violently and probably got away with it. We all know that. So all credit to them for not exploiting the situation. But the very fact that we are grateful to them pretty much proves the point of the film. Because let's be clear about this, it was the threat of Muslim violence that caused the Dutch government to grovel in such abject dimitude and to run around apologizing like headless chickens before and after the event, a spectacle which I'm sure many Muslims enjoyed. And why shouldn't they enjoy it? After all, it sends out a clear message to the entire Muslim world that in Europe, we won't stand up for what we believe in, or what we say we believe in, and we will be intimidated into silence. All you've got to do is shake your fist, and we'll do exactly as we're told. So, Islam in Europe now enjoys the best of all possible worlds. It's a religion when it wants to be, it's a culture when it wants to be, and it's a race when it wants to be. It gets full rights on all three counts, demanding and getting respect wherever it goes, while giving absolutely none. Hence, we were treated recently to the spectacle of the Swiss foreign minister degrading herself and her country by putting on a headscarf before she was allowed to meet the homicidal leadership of Iran in a cheap betrayal of all the brave women who've been murdered by these violent criminals in the name of Islam. The Iranian government were among the first to criticize the film, too, taking time out from executing children, again in the name of Islam, to denounce it roundly. But I'm sure most people realize that this fake outrage is in no way genuine. It's all part of a, a cynical campaign of intimidation by the Islamic world to force unwanted Islamic values into Western society. And that's why in every free country there is now aggressive Islamist pressure groups, usually funded by the Saudis, who claim to speak for all Muslims, but who actually speak only for a small band of fanatical bigots like themselves, and who are very quick to insult our culture and our values as degenerate and immoral, while being themselves ultra-sensitive to any perceived criticism, portraying themselves as victims, as oppressed, rather than the oppressors they are, knowing that if you repeat the lie often enough, people will start to believe it. Mr. Goebbels taught us that little nugget of wisdom, and the would-be authors of the next Holocaust have learned the lesson well. Now, luckily for me, I don't get insulted easily on a personal level, not even at being called a racist cuffer, as some idiot called me recently. But when somebody attacks my culture, well, that's a little different, because that's an assault on my values. It diminishes my sense of self-worth. I believe it violates my human rights, and I think it should be prosecuted as a hate crime. It's irrational, it's paranoid, and really, I think there's only one word to describe it, and that is civilization phobia. This is a word I like to use as a kind of umbrella word for a host of different phobias that manifest themselves in Islam, including eleutherophobia, fear of freedom, epistemophobia, fear of knowledge, prosophobia, fear of progress, pecatophobia, fear of sinning or imaginary crimes, categelophobia, fear of being ridiculed, xenophobia, fear of new things and ideas, kerophobia, fear of gaiety, big fear of gaiety, and the biggest fear of all, of course, gynophobia, fear of women. Islam is terrified of women. And that's why, all over the internet, you'll find clips from Arab television 
where, along with all the rampant Jew-hating and other propaganda aimed at turning children into murderers, you'll find clerics calmly explaining under what circumstances a man may beat his wife in the religion of peace. That's right, a man may beat his wife. And they wonder why we don't want this stuff in Europe. If you lay a violent hand on a woman, you're not a man, you're an animal, and I don't care how many so-called scholars tell you that cowardly brutality is the will of God. Chances are you've never been on the receiving end of the kind of punishment you like to dish out so freely. So I hope the Hindus have it right, because if there's any justice, you will be reincarnated as a female homosexual Jew, and then you'll find out what a pain it is having to deal with violent, primitive dickheads like you. You know, when I was growing up, I never thought I would be ashamed to live in the 21st century. I thought it was going to be a new golden age, the space age, an age of knowledge and discovery. We'd have shaken off the shackles of superstition by now. Surely we'd have the technology to reach for the stars, maybe even create paradise right here on Earth. I remember looking forward to it. Well, here we are. And what have we got? We've got Islam, a violent 7th century desert dogma that wants to take over the world, remove our freedom, subjugate women, brainwash children, persecute Jews and homosexuals, and drag us all back a thousand years. And all we can do is make excuses for it for fear of causing offence. We really are pathetic, aren't we? You know, I think people living 500 years from now will look back on this period of history and they'll laugh at us. Well, wouldn't you? Peace.